So if the whole profession's doing this for space, what message is that telling the clients about? It tells the clients that we're cheap and that they see that we are overcharge, overcharge for everything else. And, and I think that's a really complicated position that we've gotten ourselves into. For a long time, we've relied on, on sources of income like medications or vaccinations, which now, that's not my main source of income. My main source of income is surgery and hospitalisation fees and my professional time. But there are a lot of vet practices that still rely on making all their money from vaccinations and all their money from the medications they sell. We see those sorts of sources of income disappearing now. There are online pharmacies, there are vaccine clinics that will come to your house. And if you're relying on spays and castrates to make money, you're just you're never going to get anywhere, unfortunately. How many dogs, when they get spayed as a young dog with a practice, how many of them are still coming back to you as geriatrics when they're really in that intensive phase? Yeah, Have you got so a feeling for that? Well, we do. We've got really good reta retention rate. We know that 75% of our clients come back and visit us every year, which is really nice. But we're a long-established practice. We've been in the same site for 30 years. As I've, I've said, I'm a second generation vet owning the practice and so our clients tend to really like us. But a lot of practices, if they're pushing 30 to 40% retention, then they're really happy and that's closer to the industry standard. Mm -hmm. And so that means that you might spay a dog and never see it again. So you've given away $400 and they never come back to you for any services. And that's what a lot of practices who are the cheapest spayers or the cheapest castration procedures find is that that's all they're doing because people don't come back to them again after that. So it's a profession problem. We've, we've, we're doing this um, loss leading spays and it's not necessarily achieving what we're doing it for. Yeah. So is this really one of the reasons that we should really look at business sense and business perspective if a new early? Graduate, if a new graduate understands these sorts of issues earlier on, then they're gonna have a much easier time talking about them, but also working with them. I suppose that's the thing is that a lot of new graduates haven't worked in a practice before they graduate and so they don't know that a spay or a castrate is a loss leader and so they might even look at it and go well look this is a really cheap procedure why do we charge so much for these other ones if they're not taught that now they're not going to understand what's going on and it would be really neat if the whole profession could put another hundred or two hundred dollars on their spay costs how much better would wages be we would make a huge difference to, to what we could offer as compensation if we were charging an extra 100 or $200 on our spays and castrates. But at the moment, there'd always be someone who'd undercut you and, and so you just can't do that. You've got to operate within what the market expects and I think it's going to be a slow change.